www.tanktv.com. We'll blow you away. Welcome to From the Ville. This show is so childish, you won't believe you're listening to an adult network. Now, the hosts of the show, Martin and Steele. Where the fuck have you been? You know damn well where I've been. You're 48 hours and 20 minutes late. Well, I'm not the most timely person. I've never been real punctual, but I'll tell you this. I was away from away from town, out of town, if you will, celebrating with my people. Steel, the Super Bowl is over. I'm officially dressed and ready to go to spring training. I see that. And I'm officially dressed and ready to kick off Black History Month live here on From the Bill, a special Monday Night Edition, head-to-head against Monday Night Raw. Absolutely. All right, what's up, Steel? What's that? Evidently, we're going to get into this later in the show, but evidently all we do on our show, Steel, uh-huh. is we say, Oh, what's up? I took a shit. Want to read the paper? Oh, really? It's a little teaser for what's coming oh, up Oh, my. I'm very oh, excited. Oh, hey, Martin Steele here, the flagship show. Who, who's theory. talking about us? I God, can't I tell must... you yet. <laughs> That's a terrible impersonation. I have no idea who you're trying to be, but it's awful. I can bet on that. Oh, it's going to be a good time. Yeah, but we do have a guest lined up uh, coming on the air with we us do? shortly. We're going to talk marijuana reform. I think this is fantastic. What, what's this gentleman's name? Mr. Barry Cooper of oh. Never Get Busted. Oh, my. I can't believe that here's this guy who parachuted out of an airplane back in the late 70s, I believe it was, uh, over the great uh, Pacific Northwest. No, D.B. Cooper whoa, 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 whoa. is coming on the air with no, us. No, no, this no. This is no. amazing. No, I don't, no, 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 no. Uh, Barry Cooper, not D.B. Cooper. That's a different guy altogether. Oh, Oh, my heavens. How I the, thought we had solved the, the D.B. Cooper case. How the hell would From the Ville get D.B. D. Cooper on the air? Uh, that's what I was about to ask you. When you, the fucking FBI has been looking for him for like 35 years. Well, the FBI can suck it. FTV stepped up to the plate and solves this crime after 30 years of this guy missing somewhere in the woods near, uh, I believe, the uh, northern uh, Washington state area. If you All right. Will. All right. All right. I, I'm not even fucking around anymore. Where the fuck have you been? I, uh, like I said, I told you at the start of the show, I was celebrating with my papals. You could have called me. I sat here for four hours waiting for you to show up. I was in the chat room by myself. Other people left. So you gave up after four hours. I thought you were sitting here for the last two days. <laughs> I, I quit. Oh, everyone my. was in the chat room ready to go, and I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, everyone's out of the chat room. I'm sitting there by myself. Well, you know, it's February. You know, they, it's the 1st of February, they 2008. should have hung around because about 11.30 Eastern, it was uh, FTV Diddle Cam. Oh, 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 my. I don't like the sounds <laughs> of that one bit. I told you to leave these cameras off the off the uh, air when you're down here by I'm yourself. I'm kidding. I don't You do some very dirty, dirty things to your person. I diddle, but not No, I was off uh, celebrating uh, and kicking off, like I said, Black History Month. Uh, apparently, I was wrong. Uh, they're celebrating it again this year. If you recall, last year... I said that uh, Aretha Franklin had officially ate Black History Month, but apparently that's not true because it's back again this year. Yes, it is. It is. It is. And we'll be getting into I'm that so story. I'm so excited. Uh, what's that? I'm so excited for it. Oh, uh, Black History Month. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to the rally next week. Oh, really? A big I, rally. Yes, well. I think I'll probably get a double cheeseburger and maybe a, maybe a coney, oh, one of them chili dogs yes. at the rally. Well, I was. Uh, Are you going to the rally? No, but I am. Uh, I'm planning on in between shows going out back out to my car parked outside Steel Mar Studios here in Bay City and bringing in my L. Jolson makeup for I'm, show number two. I'm gonna go to the rally. I'll probably go through the left side drive through. It always seems a little quicker. What are you talking about? The rally for Black History Month. I'm going to the rally. Oh, there's a rally. How come I'm not informed about this? I'm as black as the night is long. Well, I'll take you to the rally. It's easier too if you're in the if you're in the passenger seat. Yes, because then you're closer and you can hand the money through the drive through. Oh, this sounds like because uh, that, that left. That's the fucked up thing right. is like. There's like you ever, you ever go to this rallies? It's also known as checkers and other. Of course parts of the I country. am. Look at me. It's Black History Month. I'm black. <laughs> well, here's the deal. Yes. They have two drive-throughs at this place. You got a right side drive-through, which is normal, and then you got a left side. But the window then is on your fucking uh, uh, passenger side, which it fucks me up because I'm all alone. So I go through the left side because the line's shorter, and then I got to reach all the fucking way around the car. And I'm not the smallest guy in the world. I got to unbuckle seat belts. I'm reaching in my back fucking pocket for my wallet. See, now this I don't care for. I don't care for the opposite I side drive through. 
What are you yeah. talking? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> Never mind. Is, is it going over my head? Am I am I missing something here? Never mind. Steve. Okay. Yeah. It, it, I you know what? I don't even get it. Okay. I tried something. I threw it out there. It went nowhere. It didn't go anywhere with me. I was trying. I was trying to assist you and help you along here, but I couldn't play along because I have absolutely no clue what you're talking about. I guess that's why some comedians just do the same act over and over. They don't try new things because sometimes they don't work. Yeah, and sometimes I find those comedians to be a little hefty. They might have to (laughs) shop in the Husky section at your local, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. We'll get into that a little later. (laughs) Black History Month. Be nice, Steel. Be nice. Speaking of which, do they still make Husky jeans? I'm sure they do for fat kids. Well, I mean, do you have to shop in the Husky section? Uh, a little bigger around the waist yourself, my no, friend? No, but I'm very slim. See, th- my problem, as you know. You're skinny fat. I, I don't have the huge area down here. I'm only fat from here to here. Oh, so like from tits to fucking gut. Or down all, below my penis, I'm fine. So pants are not the problem. Right. It's a shirt with a good-sized fucking gut. I need a little extra material in the middle, sir. Uh, uh, the midriff area. Uh, why don't you sit down? Uh, the listeners have seen too much of you already. That. Uh, yeah. I just. You... I just wanted to prove I wasn't also wearing uh, baseball pants and stirrups. Oh, well, on that's good. Show. Yes, because was... I'm in my spring training yes, attire. Yes, I see that. Well, please hide your girth under the uh, the studio <laughs> table here. Nobody wants to see yes, that sir. big, huge gut yes. of yours. But yes, what I've said for years, you suffer from what I call skinny fat syndrome, which is a very unique body type, folks. It's it's very skinny, noodle-like arms and legs. But then this enormous midriff that you don't know how the little tiny legs can support that type of girth. It's fascinating. Anyway, enough about me. Back to the black steel. For Black History Month. Yes. I'm going to put a few new rules in place for February. I would like it if you would uh, refrain from saying certain things. Oh, good. I don't want you to say things like the jig is up. Oh, well, there there goes my next statement. Let me cross that Um, off the list. If I tape a new sign up to the studio or, or wire something in, I don't want you to refer to it as Martin nigger rigging anything. Oh, oh, oh my, that's very offensive. None of that until yes, March okay. 1st. Okay. What about uh, if I get a little tired, can I go take a nappy? See, that's uncalled for. That can get you fired from CBS and MSNBC. Well, there you go. Then I guess I'm out for you're going to have to talk amongst yourself today <laughs> because everything's out the tubes for me. <laughs> uh, right. If you could please... Uh, Refrain from any negative stories that originate from the dark continent. Oh, my. If you should happen to throw a spear across the studio, I would like it if you did not refer to it as spear chucking. Okay. Can I at least still participate in watching uh, National Geographic? I do and like please, the, the topless pygmies. The number one rule that I do not want you to violate during the Black History Month, the month of February. Please, sir, get your monkey off my porch. Oh, very offensive. <laughs> That was, in fact, that's beyond offensive. That is what Gay Rick would call downright hurtful. Yes, it downright was. hurtful okay. to the blacks. Well, of course, uh, a few weeks ago in Las Vegas, I had no problem offending the entire Asian community, hence the dim sums. Uh, today and this week, and possibly all month long, uh, the blacks, uh, it's your turn. But I feel that we're uh, a kinship in this area because you're my peoples. Uh, and I kicked it off uh, wholeheartedly this weekend by doing a little uh, something that I, I've never done before, and we'll be getting into that at some point. Uh, going back to my, and, and here's one, can I use this, going back to my so-called roots? I don't think that's that's uh, very nice for that this. Was one of the, Save that for March. That was one of the top viewed miniseries of the 1970s, my friend. It aired on CBS for weeks at a time. In fact, you can now buy the collector's edition at Best Buy. I saw it yesterday there. Please save that type of In fact, we may be showing that uh, Roots, the the miniseries on Tank TV. Okay, just to let you know, Steel, Black History Month, we kick it off right here on FTV. Every year we do the same damn thing. Here we go. All righty. Maybe. What's going on here? What's going on with this machine? Obviously, uh, I'll tell you what's not Ah! There you go. There we go. Took a minute. down our 70s dance moves. Two white guys trying to joke and jive like the black. Very rhythmic people, those blacks. And of course, the two of us are far from it. Say it loud. 
Oh, oh people, my. get the camera. Please Tune share. into the live show. Oh, good Lord. Jesus I'm, Christ. I don't know about you, but I am absolutely worn out. I'm exhausted yeah, after that. I don't know how are. the blacks can do that night in and night out. <laughs> Tell you what, I know I don't have any hair, but after doing that, I feel like i got to pull a pick out of my head. That's why we're the flagship right there, Steel. Oh, my. Flagship show on Tank TV. Speaking of which, I'd like to take credit. Big Murph doesn't dance like that. Oh, I bet you. Yeah, I know. He dances ten times better than that. (laughs) Hard hitting Harry doesn't break it down for Black History Month. Absolutely. But we obviously, folks, uh, we apologize for that disgusting and sickening display (laughs) of us Caucasian males trying to cut a, what do they call it, cut a rug? I was going to say Go dance a jig. Dance it. Oh, no. I don't think we're Come allowed to say now. that this month. <laughs> good Lord. Please refrain, my friend. Oh, but that yes, was a good time. Absolutely. I don't know why we did that. I'm, I'm sweating. I'm in a good mood now. I may have to change my Grundies in between shows. I think I'm I say we a get a new black back, song, though. a yeah. new song for every show Oh, in the month of February. We'll have a new black oriented. Oh, show. that's fine. To, to support. Our peoples. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, like a soul, like something from straight out of Motown you're talking. The yeah, Motor yeah, City. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be a little Smokey Robinson. Oh, I'd like to some, now, some now Marvin Gaye that... would be fantastic. Well, I don't know. No, it's Black History Month, not Gay Pride Month. Oh, good Lord. That was, oh, right. We celebrated AIDS Day in December. I forgot about that, my friend. But yes, I would like uh, sexual healing. I would like, uh, let's get it on. And, of course, Lionel Richie from the Commodores, a little easy, (laughs) easy like Sunday morning. That would be amazing. But let me go as far as this. I think we should throw some of the Australians into the mix here and do a little rock and roll to kick off Black History Month as well. A little Back in Black by ACDC. Now, I don't think they're referring to the coloreds, but for some (laughs) reason, it's very fitting. Back in Black will be played on From the Mill during the month of February. I'm thinking maybe we'll just adjust the cameras and do the entire month in black and white. Or blackface. I thought you were going to say blackface. I'm on board. Or I guess either way. It works either way. We could do it in black and white or we could do it in colored. Uh, (laughs) Colored television. That would be colored tech, I believe. (laughs) Absolutely. This is going to be one hell of a month. Uh, Not only that, but I would like to take credit now because if if we don't, somebody else might or somebody probably already has. Uh, But as you know, uh, we were very irate last week when we started uh, the first show of this, this, uh, the first episode of last week, which would have aired. uh, I believe on Tuesday on Tank Radio. And uh, we're very irate at our old network, of course. And I want to take credit right here, right now. You and I, I think, uh, fired the final blow to the old network. They are now on their knees, dying and buried in a grave. (laughs) It took less than 36 days for Tank Radio, who right now is virtually not even totally up and running. There's very, very little going on other than the radio side. And when a network that's still in the infancy trying to gather shows to fill certain time slots, can knock down the big boy on the block. We're taking it up a notch after this. Tank TV has survived the war, and this is, uh, this is fantastic, and Martin and I are here to take credit for that, uh, even though I think uh, it was already on its way down and it would have died regardless of anything you or I did. <laughs> all right, Steele, let's get into this right now. All righty. We're going to show our serious side. All, all, all this kidding around. We kid the blacks. You, you guys know we love you. Oh, yeah, and we love the black All of our black listeners. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but we kid. We got serious business. We're going to be talking today, Steele, to one a former top narcotics officer in the state of Texas. Actually, in the whole region, I understand, in that whole southwest region. Barry Cooper was the top uh, narcotics officer. You may have heard of him. He put out a DVD called Never Get Busted Again. Uh, you can find it at nevergetbusted.com. I saw uh, Ball Busters 4. Is it relation in any relation to that oh, at all? I was in. I went through those little saloon doors at the local uh, video store and, and bought Ball Busters 4 a few weeks ago. Does that have anything to do with nevergetbusted.com? Apparently not, folks. I must be uh, way yeah. off base on that one. Wow. No, right, what, he, yes. what this is, yeah, this guy ahead. is a, one of the top narcotics officers oh, this is fast. in the country at one time. And uh, what he did then was he found the joy of a little plant called marijuana. Good for him. I'm very he quit proud of the him. police force. Good. And what he's most noted for is he put out a video called Never Get Busted, giving, him, giving people tips on how to avoid getting in trouble with the police when they get stopped. I like the sounds um, of this. Absolutely. I, I got do. a couple of clips here I want to play before we get a hold of them oh, very to good. give you an idea. This is him describing a couple of things you can do to uh, throw off the drug dogs if they come to your oh, car. Tremendous. Scents and fox urines that uh, hunters use, 
it's a good idea to spray your tires with that. It's a good idea to carry a cat in your car if you're going to have a couple of marijuana cigarettes. This confuses the dog where his drive is channeled to chasing these things instead of looking for the marijuana. Did you get that, Steve? Uh, I heard everything he said, but I'm a little, uh, I'm a little confused here. I thought you were going to play a clip of, of Barry Cooper. Uh, and instead, I think you threw me uh, a, a curveball there. Was that Dr. Phil McGraw? Still, he's a Texan, that's all. Did you like the... You've got the, <laughs> quite the southern no, draw. Listen, listen to the advice yes. you can get. Put fox urine on your tires to confuse a dog, or just keep a cat in your car. Oh, my. That's that's excellent advice. <laughs> uh, I'm, I hate cats, but now I may have to go out and purchase myself a feline. Now, here's one I thought was obvious, Yes, but uh, I think it... it it needs to be uh, mentioned here. Sure. I, this is on hiding your stash in your car in case you get pulled over. Uh, when you mean it's stash. It's a really good idea to hide your stash in hard to find places, such as way under the dash. There's all kinds of crevices and places to hide small amounts of marijuana. And if you're dating a fat chick, there's also all kinds of crevices. And small places to hide marijuana oh, on absolutely. her person. Absolutely. That is absolutely the truth. And, and you're speaking from your expertise in that field. You have had your fair share of those big hogs. But let me just say I this. I thought we were going to not mention that. But, uh, okay. but uh, well, you can't just bypass it and sugarcoat <laughs> it. If you bring it up, I'm going to have to remind the listeners. I'm sure they're well abreast of the situation, but it's true. Uh, let me just say this. When he says hiding your stash... Uh, he's not offending our friends over at the American Mustache Institute. He's not talking about somehow covering up that hair above your upper lip, is he? No. He's no, talking no. about marijuana, Mary Jane, let's, the uh, reefer. Before I play this next clip, Steele, yes. let's get Barry on the line. All righty. You want to do that? Uh, uh, yes. We told him we'd call. Let's uh, give him a buzz. If he wants. He may have tuned in and heard us, da- saw us dancing yes. and decided uh, not to true. do this interview. Calling though. long distance to Texas here, folk. The Lone Star is State, if you will. Is there actually long distance? Oh, anymore? absolutely. <laughs> We're calling person to person. Yes, that would be true. Is this a home phone, a landline, or a cellular telephone? <laughs> I don't know. Barry. Yeah. Hey, Martin and Steele from the Ville here. How you doing? Hey, doing great. I've been expecting your call. Good. We just played a couple clips for our listeners to kind of introduce uh, them to you to give an idea. Uh, we just played a clip about how to confuse a dog. With the little cat piss or fox piss or you know, any kind of piss, I guess. Uh, and then keeping a cat in the car also sounds like a great idea. And then uh, we also played one on hiding your stash. And I want to play another clip. Uh, this is from Fox News. And I wanted to have you here when we played this one. Because this one okay. I find ingenious. So I'm going to play one more clip and then we're going to get into this. Okay. Barry, you're, you're reminding me more of what Nambla does with sex offenders. Nambla <laughs> teaches the child rapist to this how to do it, how to get away oh, with it. You're annoying. teaching drug thugs <laughs> okay, how there's not a difference to get caught. Teaching. You're not just the- teaching the user... And, and it's not a protest. You're making money. You're exploiting law-abiding no, citizens. You're wrong. You're, you're, yes, you're, you're you are. You're absolutely... No, you're absolutely wrong. I'm pouring the money back into my efforts to get marijuana legalized. And there is a big difference in somebody that molests a child and somebody that smokes a joint. In fact, we're kicking child molesters out of prison at an alarming rate to make room for the 750,000 pot smokers you're, no, you're a year. You're also teaching the big dealers tricks, and you don't differentiate. You're not just no, teaching 18... the small-time user. And you know, absolutely, you, the you dealers. Need to be honest the de- about this. You're teaching the bad guys, and you know the correlation between marijuana. They're use not bad and guys. Crime, so you're you're making crime worse too, and they- you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Barry. <laughs> yeah. It's correct me if I'm wrong, but did that awful cunt just compare marijuana smokers to members of NAMBLA? <laughs> That's exactly what she did. And what's unfortunate about that example is that is the thought process of 95% of our judges in America. (laughs) They believe the same thing. They work with the same lines of ill logic instead of logic. They're very easy to debate and beat in an argument, but they're the ones with the hammer that can put us in jail. So they have a weapon we don't have, and that's the only reason they're winning. They're sure not winning based on logic and reason and compassion. 
And I wanted to point out, too, that anyone who didn't get to see the video portion of that clip of that appearance on Fox News, that was you on a video remote, you know, by yourself, and then five Fox News so-called experts around a table to gang up on you. Yeah, they they are supposed to tell me who's going to be on the panel, and uh, I was not expecting the, the female judge there. I know her tactics, and had I been notified she was going to be there, I would have uh, you know, been a little more prepared. I didn't know I was talking to her at the time because I can't see those people. All I have right. is a earpiece in my ear, and I'm looking into a camera. They're in New York. So the, and remember that on TV, the person being interviewed is at an incredible disadvantage. They cannot see their, their uh, attackers. They don't know who they're speaking with. All they can do is pick up on, uh, on what's going on through audio only. And right, it, it's put, right. it puts the interviewer at a disadvantage. Yeah, and I, I thought you did a hell of a job of shooting down pretty much every argument they had. And uh, if anyone didn't see that clip or wants to see the entire clip, of course, NeverGetBusted.com, where they can pick up the DVD. you got some previews on there, and that's one of the, the many clips on there. Um, and later on in the interview, this went on too. But I want to talk about, let's start with this, the history. Before we get into your history, the history of marijuana being illegal, Steele, do you know what year uh, marijuana was declared illegal in this country? I want to say it was through Harry Anslinger, wasn't it, back yes. in the 1930s or 1937. 37, okay. And for anybody that doesn't know, one of the facts that was uttered, you can go back and check the congressional record on this. One of the absolute quotes in the congressional record was Harry Anslinger standing in front of a panel explaining to people why they should uh, outlaw marijuana. And one of the reasons that he cites, we spoke of Black History Month earlier, Steve. Yes, yes, absolutely. Marijuana causes white women to want to have sex with blacks. No, let me. I don't think that has anything to do with it. I think it's the size of their junk, basically. It has nothing to do with the color of their skin or the marijuana that they're smoking. And, Barry, when you said that in that interview, they, they acted like you were ridiculous. But that's absolutely true. It's, anyone can look that up in the congressional record. It's called indoctrination. Yeah, I said that on an L.A. radio station a week ago, and, and Harry Hanslinger goes on to say, and the reason we need to make marijuana illegal is because of its effects on the degenerate races and its influence on satanic music such as swing and jazz. Oh well, when I explained on an L.A. radio station last week that uh, that is the reason marijuana became illegal, the uh, the correspondent's answer was, well, that was back then. We're talking about today. I said, man, I don't know how old you are, but that's our great-grandparents back then. That's some of our grandparents that lived back then and made those laws. That law in 1937 is the reason 830,000 people go to jail every year for marijuana crimes. So we need to study the root of what got us in this position and not only change the law, but attack the root and do whatever it takes to change the racism and the religion, religious persecutions that have poured into 2008 and are still here and causing harms on, on American citizens. Absolutely. We couldn't agree more. Actually, Barry, though, I think Anslinger may have had a point when you think of this. Marijuana gives you the munchies. The munchies make you fat. <laughs> If women smoke marijuana, get the munchies and get fat, they are much more attractive to the black man. You know, they love the fat white chicks, these blacks. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I certainly have grown up <laughs> all my life with black people. I've seen black men like, you know, all sorts of women just like a white man. But yeah. one thing for sure we do know that this war on drugs is its root is is race and religion absolutely right. and i gotta we, tell we you just, just, the just for the record uh i just like my women dirty and easy that's all i ask for uh <laughs> anyway uh why don't you get into a little history about yourself now you came up through the law enforcement ranks. you actually started as a narcotics cop for i don't know several years correct right yes i was a narcotics officer for eight years i have over 800 uh misdemeanor and felony uh, narcotics arrests that are attributed to me only, and I don't say that with pride, right. except in the sense that I have to tell you who I am so you'll understand what lens I'm speaking through. Uh, 
Sure. But yeah, but I've been involved in, in thousands of operations. I worked joint operations with the ATF, the FBI, uh, U.S. Border Patrol, uh, U.S. Customs, and uh, I began teaching classes actually as a police narcotics instructor all over the state of Texas, uh, teaching other cops uh, my tactics on how to arrest people for drugs. Well, then I switched sides and realizing that uh, the harms I was causing on Americans uh, was greater than the harm of the drug itself. So I made this uh, website, NeverGetBusted.com, and started a line of videos, the first one being Traffic Stops Volume 1 that teaches the secrets I used and teaches a person how to counter those where they won't get arrested. Okay. And then my newly released one that we're really proud of, uh, and it hasn't started shipping yet, but you can pre-order it. It's never get rated, and uh, we we had a lot of fun on that project. Right, that's uh, more for the uh, the growers, or is who is that one aimed at? Is it uh, the the casual user user like myself? Like my, myself, I really keep my weed at home. The only time I ever have it with me is when I buy it, and then I take it somewhere. Uh, you know, I bring it home from wherever I bought it. So, and you know, I usually only have a quarter ounce, maybe a half ounce if I'm lucky on me. So, uh, I, I know never get busted is perfect for me. Is never get rated, uh, more aimed at a larger user? Oh no. I never get rated is aimed at any person that wants to continue their cannabis lifestyle and not, and, and re- totally alleviate the worry of possibly getting rated. Because as you said, you might just have a quarter bag, but if I busted a quasi friend of yours, I would talk him into going and buying a joint from you, him walking outside giving me the joint, and that night I would raid your house as if you were a drug dealer. So this video teaches, in fact, if you go to the front page of my website, nevergetbusted.com, three days ago we uh, placed a link there to the entire first chapter where my wife and I fly over a clandestine marijuana field that we mm-hmm. found, and I, I, I teach people what they did. I point out the mistakes the grower made for me to spot it from the air because I'm trained by the DEA for marijuana eradication, aerial surveillance. So then we land the helicopter, and I sneak my film crew into this patch. And you can watch this for free from the front of my website. Right. And I point out the mistakes the growers made. That's the first chapter. The second chapter is how to grow marijuana indoors and not get uh, raided, specifically learning how to trick the FLIR, the forward-looking infrared radar cameras that cops use to detect indoor grows. Because it's safer to grow a couple plants in your house than to go out and try to find marijuana from a dealer. And then another chapter, we teach how to sell marijuana safely. It's a guaranteed way to sell marijuana or share marijuana with your friends and never get raided. It's got a section in there on knock and talks, how to handle police when they knock on your door without a search warrant and say, we understand you're dealing drugs in here, let us search. There's a 100% proof positive way where if that happens to you, you're guaranteed to win every time. I included that in the video. So yeah, any person that even casually smokes marijuana it would behoove them to get this uh, information and not become one of the 830,000 uh, prisoners of war. Right. Now, it's my understanding that after you saw the light, you decided that what you were doing is arresting these people for, for simple marijuana possession or, or use or what have you, that after you did that, you kind of became persecuted yourself through law enforcement. Did you not? You've been arrested for uh, basically trumped up charges for things uh, since then? Right, right. After leaving law enforcement, I began starting businesses from the ground, and then I would sell them. And during that process of eight, nine-year period, I had been arrested five times, all for bar fights. In deep East Texas, where I live, that's just part of our culture, uh-huh. <laughs> it seems to be. Well, it was our culture when we were young, growing up, you'd get in a bar fight and leave. Well, now you get in a bar fight and they arrest everybody, no matter who starts it. So... I would fight these bar fights with the jury trial and say, look, that guy picked the fight right. because I've never been one to start it. And I would get a not guilty every time. And then my last arrest 
was I didn't return two videos that my wife rented, oh, Jeepers Lord. Creepers 1 and Jeepers Creepers 2, on time to the video store, and they arrested me for theft. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I, that's uh, something I have been, uh, people have questioned me, because sometimes I don't get my porn back on time when I rent it from my local <laughs> video store. So that's fantastic. By the way, uh, Jeepers Creepers is a terrible movie. I don't know why you rented it. but uh, So they actually arrested you, and, and that's the charges that they issued, that you were late with returning your movies? Exactly. Now, when the media got a hold of that, they dropped the charges and gave the money back, but right. said nothing about the six hours I spent in jail where I was exposed to 60 other men. And if things uh, could have happened just right, I might have gotten a fight with one of them, you know, and oh, then absolutely. been in jail longer. So it really opened my eyes to our jails are packed. It, it, bottom line, America has more people in jail than any other country in the world. One in 32 citizens are on parole, probation, or in prison. That's not counting our, our jails, our state jails and county jails right now. Right. Uh, jail, the prison system is the fastest growing corporation in America right now. We built 21 prisons last year in California and only one university. So we're just, we're using our jails to collect money. We're using our jails for political reasons. We're using our jails to house nonviolent criminals. And we're turning uh, sexual predators and murderers back into society at an alarming rate because there's no room for, because uh, we're, we're stacked up with nonviolent people. Right, I agree. So it's nuts, it's nuts. It costs, it costs $17 million a day to house our nonviolent drug prisoners. What's even scarier than that is somebody is getting paid, or a group of people are getting paid $17 million a day. Mm -hmm. So you can see the root of this entire war, uh, aside from racism and religion now, has certainly turned to money. Let's get back into your story a little bit, Barry. Uh because I think your story uh, sim is very similar to my own, except for uh, I, I never actually arrested anybody. But I guess when you were a cop, you were so good that you used to go teach other departments how to make busts. And uh, you would charge them a speaking fee to go teach them. And you would tell them it, to put you, you'd go out on the street for like an hour and guaranteed them that you would make a bust. And if you didn't, you would give them back the money that they paid you to come? Very close to the deal. I would... Uh, I needed eight hours, oh, okay, okay. and the, the point was I could go anywhere in the United States in your jurisdiction, give me eight hours in your patrol car, and I'll make a drug arrest, and I never had to pay any money back. I always got paid. There's not one place in America at that time of my life that I couldn't make a drug arrest within eight hours. Now, did you ever uh, maybe slip a bag into somebody's trunk when they were very unsuspecting? Because one of my biggest problems with people... I never, I, <laughs> I, never, I never planted drugs. I did other things that were you know, just as bad, but I never planted drugs. Because I, I tell people this all the time, and I know most cops wouldn't do this, but there are that rogue few out there. I don't know what percentage, maybe 10%, maybe 5%, but it's still a chance. A lot of people get stopped, and the first thing a cop will say is, hey, do you mind if I take a look in your car? And, and my answer is this, uh, no, you're not going to look in my car. For one reason, the Fourth Amendment says that uh, you can't look in my car without probable cause. And if that cop had probable cause, he wouldn't be asking you for permission. He would just take a look That's in your right. car. And I, and I hear so many times people saying, I don't care if they look. I have nothing to hide. And, and you may not have anything to hide, but that doesn't mean that cop doesn't have a dime bag in his pocket willing to throw it into the, uh, into the trunk and say, oh, look what I found here. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter whether you have anything to hide or not. What matters is you have that right. And to help the officer understand what that right means, say, well, yeah, you can search my car as long as you let me go to your house and search through your stuff. Right. The and only let thing, me uh, search through your car. One thing I don't you know, have for no reason. The, I'm going to knock on Amendment. your door and ask you to search your house, and that's how it feels. And by the way, it's not that I was such a good drug cop that I could arrest somebody in an eight-hour shift anywhere in America. It's that there were that many people that smoke pot and use drugs out there. It's just, I mean, you stop enough and do the right things, you're going to make a drug arrest. Right, right. And we're all for that. Now, you, uh, 
I understand being that uh, you're for the rights and whatnot. I understand that right now you are getting into politics and you are running. Are you currently running for U.S. Congress under the Libertarian ticket? I am currently, yes, sir, running for U.S. Congress District 31 in Texas on the Libertarian ticket. Okay, and I assume that part of your platform is going to be to try to abolish some of these uh, nonsensical drug laws? Of course, yes. I'm running on three ma- major platforms. The first is police misconduct, specifically ending the war on drugs. Uh-huh. The second is government school reform. They used to be public schools, and now they've turned into government schools. Uh-huh. Public school reform, where we rank, we rank 42nd in the world in literacy now. 6,500 kids are dropping out of school uh, every day in America, high school, and it's not because something's wrong with our kids. It's, right. it's what's wrong with our schools. And then the third major platform will be family court reform because, I mean, over 50% of a divorces end, I mean, marriages end in divorce, and anybody that's ever been through a divorce will tell you our laws in that area in court are so unfair. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, Barry, uh, I want to get into this. Um, I do both. I, I smoke weed and I drink occasionally. Uh, when I drink, I'm an asshole. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of an you asshole are kind when, of when I'm you're sober. sober. Yeah. <laughs> I was about ready to say, don't let him fool you there, Barry. He's a prick. But let me tell you, drunk Martin is a, is a complete jackass. Uh, hi, Martin, though, is a good time. I just sit, I chill. You wouldn't even know I'm here, uh, except for you have to turn the TV up because you can't hear anything from the sound of the Doritos. Uh, chicken nuggets and pizza rolls are actually my downfall when I'm high. But uh, I want to ask you about this because you recently came out that when you were a cop, uh, you would come home, you know, what started out with a few beers each night. And uh, why don't you take it from there and kind of tell us your story, how you came to find marijuana and how you uh, you uh, became a, first a user and then an advocate. Well, actually, it was it was post law enforcement. I became an alcoholic, and I'm not. I still drink. You know, one person's definition of alcoholic is a different person's definition. I agree. Of an right. Person. People keep calling me one, and I disagree wholeheartedly, my friend. Go on. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> for for me, I was drinking so much vodka. The alcohol itself, you know, I was overdosing on it. It's called getting smashed drunk. <laughs> I was overdosing on it, and it was affecting my brain and making me a very unlikable person, which is, you know, not like me. I've always been liked. And, of course, agitation levels very high and just having tr- a lot of trouble being happy. And um, my wife now, uh, she was my girlfriend at the time. I would jump out of the truck big glass of vodka at the end of the day and she would say here try this smoke that and i go oh my gosh because i had tried it you know from time to time and i knew it wouldn't kill me but right so pretty soon the uh the marijuana use it actually took i, I noticed when i would smoke it for one i'd calm down long enough to gain some compassion and see what was going on around me okay. and for number two it it wiped out the craving of alcohol if i smoked a joint i didn't want to drink anymore right and that was that was really unusual to me so cannabis uh, marijuana saved my life you know i'm glad it's good for people with glaucoma sure. and i'm glad people in wheelchairs need it for pain but there are, are millions of americans out there smoking it simply because it does help take the edge off at the end of the day and take away the irritations of life where they are able to bring that love and that kindness forward to their family members and those around them. By the way, every drunk I arrested as a cop and I arrested a bunch would fight, cuss, spit, laugh, cry, defecate in back of the patrol car. But every marijuana smoker I ever arrested, not one of them ever caused me any problem. Yeah, they're pretty mellow. Now, ask me this, uh, going back to Harry Anslinger and some of his, uh, his, his uh, skewed theories as to uh, why they wanted to abolish marijuana. When you smoke marijuana, you don't want to go out and do black dudes, do you? <laughs> oh, let me tell you, when a per- you know how they put people on parole? Uh-huh. I mean, uh correction how they violate their parole or violate their probation yes for smoking pot peeing dirty uh-huh. 
I really believe they should prescribe it to those people because once a person is high on pot or he's been medicated with cannabis, they do not want to go commit other crimes. Oh, no, I take agree. that initiative away. You never see a bunch of people on weed uh, starting bar fights. or Well, probably because people on weed aren't usually in bars. Those are usually where the drunks go. Right, exactly. But, uh, which leads me into, Barry, you're working on a new project, uh, which I'm very excited about. It's not available yet, but it's in the... I think it's in the filming process still, or is it in the editing process? Um, which one is that? The 50-50 uh, process I want to get into. Right. It's being scripted as we speak. Okay. We'll get 50 people. And the reason it's hard for me to to come to laugh or anything about the black jokes, I don't know how you mean them, and I grew up around black people. Oh, so did not... we. We kid the blacks. It's, oh, yeah. It's no, Black no. History Month. Yeah. We're kicking it yeah. off. Oh, okay, good. We yeah. love the blacks. I, I, we love I, the gays, I, too. I knew, that's, I knew that's how it was coming from y'all, but I wanted it. People don't know me. A lot of people don't. I want to make that very clear. <laughs> very, anyway. in, our, in our chat room right now, we have a black man, a fat guy, a Mexican, a transsexual, a fat chick. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we span all types on this show. Yeah, plus you got two. You need two. to get rid of all those people. They're, they're, the, they're the bad ones of our yeah. kind of, I'm just kidding. Oh, not only that, but believe <laughs> those me. Are, those are the ones I've announced. That's who my demographic is. I said I want to be the black man's congressman. Oh, I want to be the English Mexican's guy. congressman. Yeah. I want to be middle class America's congressmen that are slaves right now at least the black people knew they were slaves <laughs> but we're paying all of these to anyway and, you and, got and my and Barry, point don't be offended if we uh, tell retard jokes because my my co-host actually has down syndrome as well so okay cool, cool. You know. yeah i've got a yeah tell me that i've got a, a five-year-old son with uh, autism, oh, really? and that's what I think our country should get interested in instead of spending so much money in the war on drugs. Let's figure out why one in 166 kids are being diagnosed with autism now. Yeah, I understand those, be, those numbers number? have, uh, have absolutely ballooned in the last few years. Some people link it to vaccinations, and other people think it's diet or, or all kinds of stuff out there. I guess we don't know right, because right. we so, don't have the money to so back research on, it. Back on topic, the 50-50 film, uh, we're going to get 50 people drunk in Hollywood. We, we've, we're renting an airport hangar, and we're making a big bunkhouse out of it. It'll be a public event. Playboy Radio is going to be there. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Geraldo is rumored to be there. Huh? I, I just said fantastic. We're big fans of Playboy Radio. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I gave a tip a week on their station for – for several months, and I'm going to be starting that back up soon, so y'all catch that. It's oh, on Thursday. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get 50 people drunk and have them ride go-karts and do field sobriety tests and film them puking and fighting and all that. And three days later, we take the same 50 people and get them high on marijuana and perform the same test. And then we uh, uh, draw a comparison there. There's some rumor that we might land the jackass crew on that. I want them to be smoking uh, marijuana through the entire event, smoking it and eating it, trying to <laughs> overdose until they die. Oh, fantastic. To prove to the world that you can't overdose to death on marijuana. Uh, what is it going to take for Martin and I to be participants in yes. this film? Well, like How do we volunteer. get involved in this as one of the 50? <laughs> You guys are there, and I mean that. <laughs> if you will shoot me an email and remind me, I will put you on the list. Oh, that sounds amazing. When is this taking place? Because I'm, I'm already getting my flights in order right now. I'm on my way, baby. Very, uh, it looks like right now I could bring our entire chat room. They all want to come. <laughs> this, <laughs> this sounds fantastic. I'm excited, very giddy about this whole uh, venture of yours. Hey, we got some... Well, like, uh, anything, like anything else, we will... We will begin filming as the money comes in. I have to get out and raise some money. Right. There's some new talk, though, that I might be signing a deal in Hollywood where I don't have to get out and hustle the money and pay investors, where somebody else, a big production company, will get behind me where I'm able to do what I do best, and that's exposing police misconduct and untruths in an entertaining way. I like the sounds of this. We got your back, my friend. Barry, we're going to go uh, a, a little uh, a little bit off topic, but still on topic with you right now. Uh, you've done tons of media uh, interviews since you started putting out DVDs, some pro, some against you. Uh, other than the two of us, who's the biggest asshole you've ever encountered on the air? You know, there were two guys. Um, 
John, you know what? I don't want to say their names because I don't <laughs> know exactly. I can do the research. I remember two, one in Dallas and one was a, a big international radio show. And me and him just could not get along and got in an argument and he wound up hanging up. Okay. Because, you know, if a, if a uh, correspondent wants to get involved in the debate, and they say something that's untrue, I'm going to call them on it. Right. Sure. And, and some of the rock stars of radio land out there are not really after the truth. To be, they're, they're not really interested in the truth being told to their listeners. They're interested in being the one on top, and that just doesn't work with me. It doesn't matter who a person is. You know, on YouTube there's an incident where I encountered – Senator McCain on an elevator about a month ago right. before the primaries. And I'll confront you. If you're wrong and you're causing damage, I'll confront whether you're a radio announcer or not. Hang on. What radio announcer was it that was horrible when this all first started? It was one of the first ones, the big guy. Man cow. The man, man cow. Oh, he's oh, a douchebag. Yeah, he's a jackass. I can't stand that prick either. Oh, I, I, we got you on that one. Uh, tell me about this. You can at least say this. It's a yes or no question when it comes to the, some of the people that you've been on, on air with. Uh, uh, Tucker Carlson, uh, the little douchebag with the bow tie from MSNBC. What's what's he like? He's got to be somewhat of a – he's a douchebag, isn't he? Can we at least say he's a well, douchebag? Well, no. What, actually, what what's strange there, that was my first interview. I had zero media training, uh -huh. didn't have a clue what, was, what to expect. <laughs> That's the very first one, and it turns out – to be the one that pops up on the first page of Yahoo when you do a Never Get Busted or a Barry Cooper search. Oh, okay. And actually, he is against the war on drugs. In oh, fact, good for him. the top of my, the box cover of my film has a quote from Tucker Carlson that says, Barry is a hero because he's standing up and saying the war on drugs is wrong and tucker carlson if there's ever an interview i want to do over it would be with tucker oh wow that's fantastic mm -hmm. i'm so glad to see he's that he's a douchebag. yeah i'm glad to see that he's on the side of uh the the, the uh anti-drug movement i I'm, I'm i support him that wholeheartedly but i'm on the anti-bow tie movement he's got to get rid of the bow tie he annoys the i piss think out he of me. did oh did he you oh. know i saw him the other day he had gotten rid of his bow tie now ask <laughs> me what tv interview uh, shocked me the most at the person's behavior Okay, okay, there you go. What what shocked you the most? It was Geraldo Rivera. I was so disappointed. He used to be the ghetto journalist sure. that got in there and told the truth for the for the pockets of America that didn't have a voice. He's got he's been there are clips of him smoking pot on YouTube out there. Everybody knows he has. Uh -huh. And he went over to Fox and he bangs right along with their right wing conservative uh, propaganda, nothing but lies. So I was, I was extremely disappointed at yeah. his behavior. Lost a lot of respect for the man because of that. Well, that's because he's got that mustache of his shoved so far up Bill O'Reilly's ass. You know that he's he's become a culture warrior. You got to you got to keep track of these uh, these damn uh, secular progressives. You know they're trying to change everything. <laughs> we have a Bill O'Reilly spot, ingeniously intertwined into the never get rated video a comment that he had made it's it's pretty neat i won't say anything right right and right. i don't want to ruin the surprise for anybody that's ordered it but uh yeah it's sad that you know people still believe fox and these media channels are telling the truth except the masses of America that every day are turning to the internet for true journalism. Right. Well, you know, Barry, I'm glad that you're out there and you're doing what you're doing because this, just like the entire Liberty movement, and I, I consider the war on drugs a, a big portion of the Liberty movement. The more people talk about it, the longer anyone gives you to support your argument with facts. Although what you say may seem shocking at first, the longer you talk, the more it makes sense. That's the reason that they won't give Ron Paul more than two minutes in a debate because the longer Ron Paul talks, they're so worried that he's going to start making sense to the American people. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're making sense to the American people. And that's why I'm excited about this 50-50 thing because if, if alcohol could be legal, uh, there's absolutely no reason for marijuana not to be legal. I mean, and some people say, well, well legalize it and tax and it. What, and what's interesting is far. I mean, we can use the government's own data to beat them at their own game, FARS, Fatal Accident Reporting System. And, and the statistics I'm about to give you, 50-50, I'm going to make the case 
that a seasoned marijuana smoker can drive a car safely, and I'm going right. to prove it with statistics and, of course, uh, uh, testing and logic. The fatal accident reporting system, the last uh, completed report was 2005. It might be 06, but I know for sure 05. And, uh, you know, anytime there's a fatality traffic accident or a traffic accident that caused a serious bodily injury, the ambulance personnel must draw blood from the driver without their permission, you know, whether they're dead or alive, and uh, check their toxicity level if there is one, and they report it to FARS. Well, 111,000 deaths in America, alcohol, when they uh, pulled the blood out of the person's arm. You know how many people in the whole United States, they pulled the blood out of the arm and it was for marijuana only? I would say less than 5%, I would bet. 17, only 17 wow. traffic accidents wow. in America. And they can't prove the person was high at the time they had the wreck. They right. might have smoked the joint three days prior, and the THC was residual left over in their system. Did you also know that people, uh, 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 seasoned marijuana smokers, can pass all field sobriety tests, including the horizontal gaze and nystagmus, where, where people smoking alcohol, I mean, uh, drinking alcohol cannot? What did he just say was going on horizontally with the gays? I have no idea. Something. Uh, uh, no, we did not know that, but we did. We 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 believe that to be true, though. I I've yeah. known people to obviously be high and drunk, and I would I would agree with that statement wholeheartedly, just from what I can observe. I would on say my own right. most people who are high think that other people can tell they're high. Right. But usually, right. people who are sober can't tell if someone's high. It's just that something in your head you think everybody knows. The you're only reason up. I know my friends are higher on me is to keep running to the microwave to get their latest. Uh, their latest snack food to bring back to the couch where they sit for the next three hours. But and, you know, you know, they say par uh, marijuana causes some paranoia, and it does. That's only because it's illegal. If it weren't illegal and if it was free, but marijuana would not cause any paranoia. Right. Things well, are. you know, it wasn't that long ago, Barry, that, uh, you know, you could send your kid down to the corner store to pick you up uh, uh, some cocaine or some heroin or anything That's legally the way it still should be. in this country. And I say, you know what? Well, you're, you're, you're right. You're right. Those drugs have only been illegal for 80 years, something right. like that, compared to... 5,000 years of history or whatever we've got out there, and it was America coming along, a, a new country, a sibling country, 200 years old, and all of a sudden we think these four substances that have been uh, legal and used across the world all these years, we make them illegal for us and illegal for the rest of the world. Right. Well, we're, we're uh, full supporters and proponents of all vices, consenting adults, whether it be drugs, prostitution, gambling, uh, you name it. I'm for it all. I believe if you're an adult, you have the right to make a decision as to how you live your life uh, as long as it doesn't here, here. fringe here, upon here. somebody else's uh, right to do the same. So so we back you wholeheartedly. I love the cut of your jib, my friend. If we were in the, the 31st district, in Texas, believe me, we would be on a push to vote your ass in office, and with the FTV Nation, you would get in there. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, support. absolutely, my hey, friend. Hey, Barry, just out of curiosity, anytime you ever stopped someone who was high and you arrested them, did any of them ever ask you who the victim was in that crime that they were being arrested for? I never got asked that. Uh, do you have, would, now, I know now the answer, of course, there was no victim, but... Uh, no, the answer is the victim is the person in the handcuffs. Well, that's I a good point. Answered, oh, good point. I just, <laughs> yeah, I just answered, uh, my, I have a message board, nevergetbusted.com, where people have asked thousands of questions, and I get on there and I answer those questions, and it's free. You can go read it. And I just posted, uh, you know, because somebody had presented the argument, well, it's just the cop doing his job. Well, they should still be held accountable because even uh, soldiers carrying out orders from dictators are later tried for war crimes as long as they're dictator. So just because a dictator or a government says, okay, beat them over the head because they're a black person and they're an escaped slave, and you beat them over the head because they're an escaped slave, that doesn't make it right, and there should be some accountability there. Oh, we agree. So I went on to say, uh, you asked a question, I lost my point. Remind me the question so I can finish the point. Oh, we don't remember. Oh, we're not that bright. <laughs> we can't remember that far down the line. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Barry, we, I, we I appreciate usually, it. I usually fi finish my point out, but I bird walked a bit there. <laughs> oh, that's I can't all right. Remember we do that a lot, too. Someone will tell us in the chat room in about an hour. Uh, oh, hey, I know what I said. I know what I said. I said, so 
and then they made the comment, well, the police are doing that to feed their own families. And I made the comment on my board wall ago, any man or woman that destroys another family to feed their own family belongs in jail also. And then I made the comment, yes, I said it. A police officer arresting a nonviolent citizen for pot deserves to go to jail. I believe. Because they're placing a nonviolent person in a dangerous situation. Oh, I think they're taking freedom away from someone, and, and freedom is a, is a possession of mine, and I don't want my freedom stolen from me. Hey, Barry, we thank you a lot for coming on. We are going to put a permanent link on our website over to your website, nevergetbusted.com. Uh, I hope all of our listeners go over there, pick up some videos, learn a few things so we can uh, get people out of jail. And I'm going to say right now, I predict within the next 15 years that marijuana will once again be legal in this country. Country. I predict five years. Oh, oh really? Good. Okay. A much shorter time frame. We like that, and hopefully the rest of the drugs will follow suit somewhere down the road, but you got to start somewhere, and marijuana is where we're starting. Uh, you've been featured in High Times, Cannabis Culture, and uh, you're all over. Uh, I see you're on the talk show circuit, so uh, we hope to have you back on sometime soon once uh, 50-50 comes out. Of course, guys. You've got Candy's number. You call her anytime. I support what, what you're doing on your show. Thanks. And we're not bullshitting, Barry. I will come down to Texas and get fucked up on camera for you without any hesitation. We love the camera, and I might even, hey. get, I might even show a little full frontal nudity for the folks that are watching at home. Absolutely. Hey. I'll drop my trousers. <laughs> oh, thank you, Barry. <laughs> we're game here in Texas, that's for sure. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, I'm on my way down. Okay, thanks a lot for joining us, Barry. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Good night. Yep. Take care, buddy. Barry Cooper from yes. NeverGetBusted.com. That, that guy has so much uh, information that we could only really scratch the surface. Yeah, I mean, he, he's he's a bevy of information. And not only that, but if you go on his website at NeverGetBusted.com, uh, you may want to sign up for his monthly newsletter, uh, Barry's Buds. It's an online newsletter where he keeps you abreast of all of his activities, all of his upcoming uh uh, ventures, especially with some of the DVDs and whatnot. He's, he's also a touring speaker. He he, he also will uh, go out and uh, you know speak at certain events and whatnot. Right, uh, you can hire so him to come speak to you. Absolutely. Group. He's, uh, I said this guy has so much information that uh, probably a good interviewer with a clue could have drug a lot more info out of him. But uh, we're retarded. So. Yeah, and not only that, but we, you know, you watch some of the clips. You already, he's already talked about it so much. I mean, you try to, you know, you try to delve into some things that maybe he hasn't been touched upon on right. other shows. So, but he's out there. You'll see him coming up on. Uh, he'll be on Fox News, MSNBC, CNN. He's, he he makes the circuit pretty routinely. So keep your eye out for him, Barry Cooper, my friend. Hey, Steele, I want to tell you about a new uh, 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 thing going on in this war on terror. Oh, I got a three-page story in front of me, but I only got to read you a couple paragraphs. Oh, sure. I'm all ears. Uh, this is from Baghdad, Steel. Oh, over in Iraq. Yeah. Absolutely. You want to hear about what's going on over there? Want to hear how the surge is working? Persia, the Middle East. Absolutely. They, uh, you know, the surge was going. Now the surge has uh, uh, been, been uh, they're, they're starting to find new ways around the surge. These right. terrorists, these uh, extremists, these uh, Islamo-fascists, as O'Reilly yes. likes to call them. Middle Eastern women make me surge in my pants. Uh, Baghdad, Iraq, yeah, Steel. Right. Remote-controlled explosives strapped to two mentally retarded women. Oh, my Lord! <laughs> whoa, 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 beep, beep. Back the fuck up here, my friend. Did I just, what, did you just say two retarded women? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on in Iraq? What is taking place over there? You have my attention. Fill me in with the, with the rest of the details, big boy. Oh, this is going to get good, Steel. I think you're going to really... What do you mean it's going to get good? It's already good when you <laughs> say two point. retards with bombs strapped to them and somebody's r sending them on their way to run amok in the middle of Baghdad. This is fascinating. <laughs> oh, my heavens. What's oh, going on over steel. there? Yes, uh, remote control explosives strapped to two mentally retarded women. Oh, my Christ. Detonated in a coordinated attack on Baghdad Pet Bazaars oh, Friday. Whoa, 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 whoa. Excuse me now. <laughs> they send the retards with the bombs instead of sending them to a marketplace, which is buzzing with people out trying to make purchases. They send them to some sort of zoo or some sort of pet shop. What is going on? A is it pet bazaar. Well, you know the tards love pets. They love animals. You get I a, knew I was never going to get through this. You one. give a retard, uh, you put them in the presence of an animal, something they can, you know, something with fur or something that has a tail, and those it's like putting a box of crayons in front of them. You got their attention, and they'll, they'll stand there and stare at it for the next three hours. 
I had a feeling that when you put the word mentally retarded in the opening yeah, line, uh, I'm not getting very far into That's not a good thing story. to do. They should have waited till the end. But <laughs> let me also ask you this. How You said in coordinated attacks. Well, let me ask you this, my friend. I've never known a retard to be all that coordinated. That's true. They're very uncoordinated. <laughs> uncoordinated persons. Oh, Steele. Uh, Rocky officials said this. Uh, the, it killed at least 73 people in the deadliest day since the U.S. sent 30,000 extra troops to the capital in what was known as the surge. Who's... Whose brainchild was it uh, in the Middle East? Is it Al Qaeda? Al Qaeda? Uh, the other one over there? The the Hamas? The, the Sunnis? Uh, the Hezbollahs? The, 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 yes, the Sunnis? The, the, the Shiite? The Ba'ath Party? Who came up with the brainchild of an idea to say, you know what? Uh, we've sent women, we've sent children, we've sent perfectly healthy adult males to do our dirty work. What haven't we? What haven't we thought of yet? Who was the guy that raised his hand and said, retards? We want to send the retards. Well, I, hopefully I'll be able to tell you. Oh, my. The chief Iraqi military spokesman in Baghdad, Brigadier General Qasim al-Musawi, oh, claimed that the female bombers had Down syndrome. Oh, my. We're not just talking somewhat <laughs> mentally retarded with somewhat of a low IQ. We're talking pure downs, my friends. These are the most retarded of the retards. They were kicking down, These are. they say. Now, do they, now in Iraq, do they have special ed? Because they don't even have schools, do they? Are there schools in Iraq that have special education <laughs> classes for where these women were brought, uh, born and raised? Did these people go through the special education system in Iraq, or is there not such a thing? I don't know. That's a good question. Do they have them? I'm sure there will be, eventually, if, if the U.S. is rebuilding all the schools we bombed. Right. Now, my understanding is this as well, and I'm taking this from a uh, documentary I saw not too long ago. Uh... Now, it's our understanding here in America, obviously, the TARDs, when they attend school, or actually when they go anywhere, they have to drive on the little bus, uh, which my co-host drove to school, or rode to school, rather, when he was growing up. Uh, now, is it my understanding, too, when they strap bombs to these people, are they the short bombs? Little bombs? Are they little, are they smaller than the average-sized bomb? Is it much like the that buses? I don't know. Oh, this is fascinating. Uh, are you going to get on with the story, or are you going to sit am, there sir. and type? I am, sir. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Down syndrome and that the explosives were detonated by ro remote control, indicating that they may not have been willing attackers. So the, <laughs> the retards aren't strapping them on and right. running into a fucking thing. Okay. Some other, uh, 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 what, what do they call them? Some Insurgent. Sort of, some sort of is, bully. Is strapping up the tards. Oh, my. Uh, and then sending them in and with the remote control. Sort of like when we were in like junior high and we played kill the man with the ball and I made the mistake of wearing a hood sweatshirt and you <laughs> tied the ball yes. inside the hood yes. of my shirt so I couldn't get rid of it and I got pummeled yes. for hours on end. You couldn't get rid of you the ball. Fucking asshole hence, that you are. Yes, hence the name Kill the Man with the Ball. You had the ball on your person. Also you couldn't get rid of it. Then I smear the queer. Yes, and you were the queer that day, my friend, <laughs> for about three hours before the ball. Five, somebody, I think, finally eventually ripped the hood off your fucking car. You're a real fucking prick. Yes, you well, were if, then and you are now. Absolutely. Now go on. So you're saying these were unwitting participants? Oh, in these this. were suspected Sunni insurgents, deal, oh. and they're trying to subvert these stepped-up security measures. Oh, good really, lord! Really, really, before this, who's gonna, you know, check the tard? No, 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 no. So they, like, so the tards didn't say, "Yeah, I'll put a bomb on." No, it. no, they didn't. Say, I'm a bomb. So. Now that was now you're crossing the line. I don't know if that I don't know if that was really truly called for. I think we all know how retards speak. You don't have to try to impersonate one. Very rude, my friend. So uh, anyway, somebody just came up to him and they maybe pulled. Did they pull this number? Tell me this. Does the story go into this detail? Because this is fantastic. This is what I do if if I came up with the idea that we're going to strap bombs to the tards and send them into a zoo. This is what I would do. I would go up. Uh, much like I used to do to you as well, aside from uh, sticking the ball in the back of your hooded sweatshirt, uh, I used to come up to you once in a while and tap you on the back like, hey, buddy, what's going on? And then as you walked away, you would have a sign taped to your back that said, kick me, and it would have an arrow pointing down towards your ass. You know the, you know the immature, imbecile type of things that I used to carry out, my prankster-like uh, qualities. But I was I looking to find some of my retarded sound oh, uh, okay. clips. The only, I can't find my version of 9 to 5 because these were female tards. Oh. The only thing I found was the California song, and I know how that pisses you oh, off. Oh, that annoys the piss <laughs> out of me, absolutely. But uh, in this story, it might be very appropriate. But I would have came up to the tards and said, hey, what's up, tard? How you doing, tard? And I would have patted him on the back because the tards <laughs> love to be hugged. They like to embrace. They like to embrace other. 
feathers, and they like to be very uh, in close proximity and have somebody's arms around them. So I would go up and pat them on the back. <laughs> Meanwhile, I would have a bomb <laughs> taped to the back of their shirt as they walked away. I got to interrupt. Oh, yeah. Kilo. Yes, Kilo, 69. In the chat room wants to know if instead of telling the Tards they would get 72 versions, if they just would offer them like 72 kittens. Oh, oh that would. Because Tards love oh, kittens. They love kittens and crayons. Crayons are their <laughs> forte. And I would also say this. Maybe I think, uh, I think the Tards would really strike gold if somebody would just come up to them and say, hey, uh, we'll give you a 72 IQ. Which I believe is higher than what a tard normally has. Which I believe the level is 75 for the cutoff of being a retard or a functional adult. And uh, so 72 would be high in, the, in these person's regard. Trying to see if there's anything in here about them being retarded. But it just goes on and on. Giving okay. Does it show pictures bomb. of them? Before or after the bombing, mind you. I'm very interested in seeing photos. Nope, no tired pictures. Oh, well, that's good because I wouldn't be able to eat for a few hours. We all know how that goes. It doesn't matter if there are terrorists with the bomb and they're retarded. All retards um, make me lose my appetite. That's just the way it is. I'm not proud of it. It's the way it is. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to say this, Steel. Uh, as far as the war on terror goes, I know they're supposed to be our sworn enemy. I really don't give a fuck. I'm right. not over there. So they're not really my enemy. I, I, I could fucking care less, to tell you the truth. Uh, I think if our troops are out of there, they couldn't bomb anybody. But uh, whether or not you like the insurgents, whether or not you like the Iraqis, no matter whose side, I don't care if you are the most loyal George Bush Donald Rumsfeld supporter. Right. You got to give them credit for getting the fucking tards involved. You got to say, well, that's a goddamn good idea right there. Holy fuck. We never saw that coming. I, I think this is the reasoning behind that. That's they said, we have to get some of the handicaps involved in our in, in, in our uh, in our movement here <laughs> to to blow up uh, the economy and blow up the people that are out just uh, doing their everyday activities. I think this is where their reasoning came into play. I think their first impression was, okay, let's go get the handies, but if we're good, if we're going to do it, let's start with the amputees. Until somebody said, well, uh, they may not be able to get to where we send them to because, hence, they have no legs. So I think the next thing <laughs> on the chart was retard somewhere down the line. Because let's face it, there's a whole host of people you could send in with some sort of ailment. Let's just hope I never go over there and they send people in that have STDs because <laughs> then I'm going to be the first one through the door with a bomb strapped on my penis. I just got to say this. Yes. You're the guy at the checkpoint that let the tard in. The tard blows up. If you survive right. that... You got to look at it like this. You, it's similar to the football coach that first invented the flea flicker. The, fr- wait a minute. the flea, the flea flicker or oh, the, the flea, flea flicker? Fl- there you go, my friend. I mean, at that point, if you're a safety right. and on defense, you're playing safety, and you fell for that first ever flea flicker, right. you got to just be standing there watching them run into the end zone behind you going, Holy fuck. Right, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, it's like the Statue of Liberty. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying. Yes. They used fucking tards. And, of course, they're in the uh, chat room saying we should send Dan Rackley over. Oh, I, hey, believe me, <laughs> I'm all for it, my friends. I think Rackley should be the first one through the door over there. There's one thing about and our Nuggie, show's deal. We're and gonna... Mr. Spring Break. And, of course, my co-host. Uh, there's a lot of retards on the show, so let's not just narrow it down to one and single one guy out because there's a host of them. But yes, Rackley would certainly be up there. Uh, I'm all for it. There's one thing about this show that unites everybody. We have, I, I noticed we put a poll up in the chat room earlier yes. whether our listeners smoke pot. 50%. 50% smoke it, 50% don't. Uh, we have, you know, all these different divided. We all come down on different sides of right. different issues. But one thing every listener of From the Ville is aligned with. Besides their love for Martin and Steele, is their absolute hatred of Mr. Dan Rackley. Oh, that is true. He does. He he is a divider. That, or he, he, he's, he's a uniter is what Dan Rackley is. <laughs> he, is. he unites people on the same front with the same ideas, the same principles and concepts, and that is death to Dan Rackley. And I want to say this, Steele. There's yes. been a change in the tank radio schedule. We now air still every Tuesday and Thursday, but we've been moved 7 o'clock every Tuesday and Thursday on tank radio. That's 7 o'clock Eastern Standards, my friend. And if you miss it there, you can always... Download all archives, all 178 previously available shows at fromtheville.com. Don't forget, nevergetbusted.com. Uh, Robert's fat. Yes, he's enormous. Uh, but let me just say this. Let me also mention this. Uh, we normally, obviously, are live uh, 
Uh, Tank TV uh, schedule is Saturday nights starting at 8.30 p.m. We'll do two shows, the second one starting around 10. This past week, obviously, we postponed it due to my antics uh, with the Black History Month going on. Uh, And once in a while, they will be postponed periodically, not often, hopefully. But if you want to be kept abreast of all the updates and news and and whatnot going on here from the bill, get on our uh, email list, and we'll we'll send out uh, bulletins and postings in that regard uh, by sending it to ftv at fromtheville.com, and you can be aware of that. We'll also send out postings out. Obviously, MySpace, Tank TV, the whole nine yards. But anyway, if you want to know for sure, get on our email list, and we'll send you uh, updates whenever that happens to occur, which hopefully will not happen again for a couple weeks. So we have to go through this whole thing that we do at the end of the first show every week, Steel. If you are listening on Tank Radio, we're back at 7 o'clock. If you're listening on From the Bill, you can download. Oh, I should say 7 o'clock Thursday. Yes, 7 o'clock Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're back with another brand new episode Thursday, 7 o'clock. If you are listening on From the Ville, uh, midnight Eastern time, Friday morning, the show becomes available for download. Uh, If you are listening live on Ustream or Tank TV... We'll be back in about 10 minutes with another show. That's uplift. why you want to go live. You're the first person to get it. And, Steele, don't worry about Saturday, Monday. We can do this show anytime we want. Tank TV will give us time. We're the fucking uh, we're the the flagship, flagship show, Christ and we're sakes. prime time, baby, and we're going to take it prime time from here on out. But also go to Podcast Alley, podcastalley.com. Vote for From the Bill. Also, if you're on Ustream, and we'll get out of here after this, I promise, but if you're on Ustream, put us on your watch list. I think it gives you updates uh, for when we do go on the air, although hopefully our schedule remains uh, pretty much uh, consistent. And from here on out. And we are out of here and we'll be back. And- remind me. Yeah. Remind me next show. I don't want to yes. do it now because we've done so much plugging. Right. But remind me to tell people to go to iTunes and leave a comment. That too. Uh, leave comments wherever you damn well please. We'll we got that. enough places for comments and forums <laughs> and whatnot. And I'm going to do Chuck Willery on the way out. We'll be back in two and two. Jesus Christ. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to hurry up and piss. Yeah, I, I gotta, I'm <laughs> farting too, by the way. All right, we're out of here. Come to Bill. The Tank Community website was created for fans of Tank TV and radio. It, it is the, the only free community on the internet that you get paid for being active and playing the game. Each month, you can win cash and prizes just for watching Tank TV and listening to Tank Radio and being a good little soldier by building up the Tank Army. There's a lot going on, so sign up for free and check it out. If you don't like it, that's the worst that can happen. I'll just shoot you and delete your profile like you've never, ever existed. Tank TV, the adult news channel www.tanctv.com will blow you away.